everyone. Today I'm painting these little lemons because a few of you asked me about them. I have uh, only done a short on these in the past, so I thought I'd go ahead and do those. And I'm really curious, so I had to get a new phone and um, I'm really gonna be curious if it's going to film different, better. I sure hope so. All right, supplies. If you don't need these, you can just fast forward. But what I am using is my favorite, all time favorite, my Artisto pads. This one, I'm still in the spring 2024. Um, great student paper. I'm actually almost out, so I reorder these. They come in a three pack. And I just love them. I've got my Meaden palette, which I'm using. I still haven't unpacked my uh, watercolors and wildflowers custom palette. And I actually like this one because the wells are so big. And then I've got my My Lane watercolors. Can't say enough about those as always. Great little student palette. So many color choices. They're creamy, they're buttery, they're transparent. Love them. And best of all, they're under uh, $20. I think a lot of times you can get them on sale for even 15. And uh, I've got my clean water, my rinse water, and also my matching two well ceramic uh, water well, which I absolutely love. And then I just went out to my garden. Unfortunately, no lemons on my tree right now. Uh, those, we actually had them just a few months ago, but I picked them all. But I did pick some of these um, little blooms that I thought were, thought were so interesting. So I'm going to add some of those in here. I've got my little reusable um, cloth that I dab off on quite often. And I'm using, my new brush that will be coming out, the eight round. It's kind of a version of that long round you see me use a lot. Um, and my favorite color, so there we go. All right. I'm going to um, go ahead and start this. And what I wanna do is I'm going to paint kind of a base first. So kind of a base glaze. And I think I'm going to have my light coming down this way. So I'll have maybe a shiny spot here, maybe a shiny spot there. So I'll kind of keep that in mind when I go in right now. Starting with that very light glaze using the tip of my brush and then widening out, press using a little bit more pressure. And again, I'm leaving that white space in the center there like that. And by the way, I'm using my lemon yellow in my My Lane palette. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. And I'm going to achieve my, um, my uh, kind of the shadows and such. First kind of glazing over and creating some darker glazes. I might um, even sometimes, so I do I do shadows kind of different, and here I'm just gonna feather. So I've got a damp brush, and I've wiped it off on my towel, and I'm just feathering in here because I want to soften that edge. I don't want a hard line. So going back to the shadows, <clears throat> what I like to do is first deepen with, um, well, because I started with this light yellow first, I would first increase the value there and then go in and put a second glaze over. And then what I might do to deepen the colors around the edges is just use um, a color right next to the lemon yellow. So that would be that cad yellow. So I'll probably go in and do that. But while this is wet, I do want to go in and lay down my second glaze there. And I don't mind that this is maybe going to have just a touch of some of those blossoms and blooms. Whenever I paint um, fruit or anything organic, I 
I don't have a big problem with that. The other thing I want to do is I want to go in right here and get that brown in because I always love when my brown mixes with my um, plant or flower, in this case, my fruit. I, I always think that's just kind of a cool thing. So I'm letting that spread in a bit. I feel like it's just such a beautiful organic feel. There we go. So I just added in a little of that, rinsed my brush, tapped it off, and I'm gonna let that spread a tiny bit. So I didn't do too much, and there we go. Now, while this is also red, I'm going to go down into the bottom with a little bit of my Sienna, which is almost kind of like a brown type of vibe, and go in around the bottom here. So this is where I start bringing in a little bit of, um, I think the yellows and the browns are pretty close to each other um, on the color wheel. So I'm bringing in those. So I'm still kind of using a little bit analogous colors. You can get some great shadows if you go opposite on the color wheel. So I could add in violets or blues. Well, yellow and blue would be green, but um, maybe some yellows and purples, and that would create a really pretty shadowy color when you use opposites. But you have to be kind of careful because opposites can look kind of muddy sometimes. So I'll first go in and use those uh, analogous colors on the color wheel. So I had a little cad yellow in there, so I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of that and drop that in. And I'm playing to the fact that the bottom of these lemons might have a little bit of shadowing, maybe even up there. There we go. So I'm just touching in while it's wet on wet. And I'm pretty happy with that. Again, I don't care if this has some blooms in it because um, I think blooms are, for me, perfectly acceptable in fruits and things like that. And then just softening those edges like that. Pick up a little bit more of that yellow. And then I go in and soften that edge with just a damp brush. There we go, I quite like that. And then I'm going to put a little bit more. So if you can see that brown, I love that sienna color. I think it's really pretty. And it's very much got a lot of the yellow in it. Before this dries, I'm gonna go ahead and go in and play with that leaf a bit, a, a, bittle, a little. <laughs> I'm gonna add a tiny bit of yellow, cad yellow, to my sap green because I want a light wash on the leaf first. So point and then using the side of my brush. And I've got, if you can see here, a little bit of a fold there. I'm going, so I'm gonna leave that untouched because I wanna make that feel like it's kind of flapping over and it's hitting the, getting um, a little bit of the light. And then I'm gonna add just a touch of some darker green where the inside of the petal, I mean, I'm sorry, leaf, is tucked behind that folded over part. So it kind of looks like this really cool little 
shadow in there. Let's grab a little bit more of that. I've got this olive green on here. And I'm going to just add that in there. There we go. Maybe even a tad bit of brown. There we go. Little bit more of that green. So working in glazes here. There we go. And I'm gonna leave that alone for right now. So I'm getting a little bit of a spread of that green, which is totally great. I love that. Might add just a tiny bit down here because I know my lemons, whenever I pick them, they always have a few little green spots on them. One of the things I love about watercolors too is you can make, create some really subtle hints of color because watercolors is so soft and I, I really love that about watercolors. There we go. Okay, I quite like that. This outer turn of the leaf, I will use a lighter, like yellowy green. And right now I'm gonna go into just the tip with maybe my olive green. Add a little bit more water. That's probably 50, 50, 50 pigment, 50 water. And if you need to, tap off your brush and just tap in there. Rinse my brush, and I quite like that. So again, I'm glazing my favorite technique to create those shadows, especially where this leaf is folding over, just tapping in while it's dark. Okay. I'm going to grab a little bit of my brown here. Let's see, where can I put that in my palette? We'll just put it right here. Maybe pick up a little bit there. I don't like to wash my palette off because a lot of times I use the same type of color palettes. So it's nice if I already have a lot of the colors I use in there. I'm using the tip of my brush anchoring my hand and going to go in right like that. Then I might add a darker brown in there or maybe even some of that green. I always think green and brown is so pretty together. There we go. So I've got that little branch coming down and the branches really, if you look here, they've got mine. I'm sure there's different lemons. These are Meyer lemons, I believe, have a lot of green in them. They're almost actually all green, no brown. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that because I notice they do get a lot more green in, or brown in them, but right now they're pretty much green. There we go. Okay. Tap in. Just keep darkening this. And I've got just a little bit of a bloom here, so I'm just going to smooth that out. Move it around a little bit. I do like the blooms, but Okay, just smooth that line out. There we go. All right, so I'm quite happy with that so far. I might add a tiny bit of dark brown down there, but let's move on to our other leaves. 
I'm going to grab some of my sap green. Or I think this is tree green in um, the My Lang palette. And there's a lot of yellow in these, in my leaves. Now that may just be because of the time of year right now. So what I'll do is go in first with that point, use the side of my brush like that. Wet my brush and dab it off. And then I'm gonna go in there with this brown before it dries and bring that down. Love that. Get a little bit of my olive green. Tapping my brush off. And I'm just gonna keep tapping it in here because I really want that to have a darkness and tap in here. And get some of that kind of moving around. Rinse my brush. There we go. Okay. A little bit of that yellowish green in there. My lemons had a lot of le of a yellow in the leaves, which I kind of like. I always love adding um, the color of my fruit or flowers into my leaves. I think that's really pretty. There you go. And then I'm going to actually make this very light on that side as well, more of a lemony green type of color. Point, press. I don't want to get too, too close to to this because it'll spread it out. Little bit more dark green. Just tapping in there for some interest. Oh, how pretty. Now, what I was really excited about, one of the reasons I actually picked this is because these little blooms were so interesting to me. They've got a lot of purple in them, which is kind of cool because nothing else on the, the tree is purple. So I thought that was quite interesting. I'm going to make these purplish like that. Another one. And look how beautiful, because they're contrasting colors. There's that yellow and purple, even green and purple. They're so beautiful together. They're opposites on the color wheel. And I left some white in there. Then I'll go ahead and create these leaves. That's a little bit bright. Let's darken that up a bit. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, let's go on to another leaf. I just refilled my palette, and I don't know why, but I have a sneaky suspicion that I might have put the wrong green. It looks awfully bright today. So I'm kind of mixing my own green here. I'm also using this yellowy green because a lot of these leaves have some yellow green in them. But look how beautiful. Oh, so pretty. Let's do this leaf here. Point. Use the side of my brush. There we go. Rinse my brush. Dab it off. Just going to blend that a bit and then grab some of that yellowy green. And I don't wanna to add too much because I actually want that back leaf to be a little bit darker. And then point, press, 
rinse my brush, and I'm gonna use a tiny bit of the brown, and look at the white space I'm leaving in there too. That's just kind of my thing. Ooh, see how that blended in? Love that, I love that effect. Love when the brown goes into the green. I think that's just so pretty. Okay, and then let's do this leaf here, which is gonna be a little bit darker because it's in the back. So point, and drag that around. I'm even gonna leave that white space in there. Use a tiny bit of brown. Ooh, yeah, look at that. I'm gonna pick up a little more of that green too. I feel like I want some more green in my branch here. There we go. And maybe just a tad more green in there or brown. There we go. Yes, I love that. This would be really pretty on a um, one of those recipe book pages, those vintage recipe book pages. So here's another leaf where the side I kind of made turned over. So I'm going to press or uh, paint that very lightly. Once that dries, I'm gonna go in and do the back of the leaf lighter. And then I'm gonna make this leaf here quite light, because I want it to feel like it's in the back. There we go. Rinse my brush. I'm gonna create a tiny bit more of that greenish yellow. like that. Just a little bit of my olive green. Oh, so pretty. It's just, I, I kid you not, I love how watercolors just spreads like that. Look at the brown going in there now. So I added the brown. Oh, just, I love that. I love that look. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit there. Now I've got a little bit of water on my brush. There we go. And let's go ahead and do this big leaf down here. So I'm going to grab a tiny bit more paint. And we'll go ahead and do this one point. And I'm using the side of my brush so that I can cover a large area. And I still even left some white space in there. Now, while that's like that, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with some of that light green so I get a really pretty mix. There we go. And I might just dab in a little bit in here just to get, I'm just smoothing that out a bit. But again, I, I don't mind those blooms when I'm working on something organic like these leaves. So let me take some of my olive green Mix it with a tiny bit of brown. I could even just use a darker value, meaning more paint than water, to shadow in the edge there because this, this leaf here is behind these lemons. There you go. And these are a lighter value, meaning more water, less pigment. And in a minute, we'll go, it's kind of cold here, so things aren't drying quite as um, quickly as they might. I have a little opened flower here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna do that in a very, very light, light wash of pink.
There we go. And then in the middle, I think I'll go in with, where is my yellow? I use my lemon yellow, which I don't use that often. But in this case, they really do have some lemony yellow centers, which I think is really pretty. And I'll just tap in here. Actually, let's let that dry. Yeah. Add some yellow to that. So I love how this kind of carries your eye with these leaves. And let's see, what could we work on next while we're kind of waiting? This might be dry, but I don't want to take a chance. So I'm going to try and do this little leaf here. And I want to make that darker because it's on the inside of the leaf like this. So just pick up some of that olive green. I'm going to mix it with a little of that brighter green because I don't want to get too dark. And I'm going to go in. I feel like that might be a little bit dark. Let's get a lighter value here. And look at all that that comes off on my, oops, you can't see, darn it. How much comes off on my brush when I tap. That's what you want to do. And then point, press, rinse my brush, dab it off, and just soften that edge. So it gives this illusion of that leaf turning. I'm going to put another glaze in here. Point, press, like that. And then let's just soften that line a little bit with a damp brush. So pretty, isn't it? Watercolors, you guys, I, I can't tell you enough how, you know, I'm, it's not like I'm just this amazing artist but you know I know the techniques I've learned a lot of the techniques and I may not even do those perfect I do them how I like using them and that's fun for me and that's what this is always about like any of you could paint this is so much about learning those techniques now I could go in a little bit with some of this sienna and that's why those brush strokes are so important because when you can get those down, you're gonna feel really confident in painting. And then let's go just with a glaze here. And then I'll kind of soften that little edge, pick up some more of that. And go down in here, soften that edge. And I even got some of that green in there, but you know what? I like that. I think that looks really, really great. Really pretty when it bleeds in like that. I want to use just a tiny bit of that burnt sienna up at the top here because my lemons always have this little like knob type thing at the top. So I feel like I want to capture that a little bit. I always try to think about like for me, what is recognizable, whether it's in my flowers or in fruit or um, vegetables or what have you is trying to find, okay, what could I add in here that is going to be recognizable to the viewer? Like, oh, yep, that's a lemon or that's, that's a plumeria or whatever it might be. And then I'm going to go in before this dries too much. And I also want to add just a tiny bit of green down there. Wash and rinse my brush. And let that kind of bleed, kind of like it did here, naturally. 
There we go. And then maybe even a little up here. So I'm really liking how this feels. I'm gonna grab a tiny bit more, just the tiniest tip of my brush of that Sienna and just kind of dab in. And then let that spread. Creating a tiny, tiniest, lightest value of a shadow on that side, just to make my lemon look a little bit more rounded. Yeah, I like that. Just tapping in up there. So I think I'm really pretty much done. I could clean up that line a little bit. I kind of stopped short there. So let me just get a darker bit like that, where that kind of folds over. I'm gonna use a tiny bit of a darker value there and just go right along that edge so it really gives that feeling it's turned over. And then just a damp brush and smooth out that line. There we go. Yeah, I like that. All right, well, I think I'm pretty much done. I've got, um, so notice the values I have. This one here, your eye automatically, or mine, goes to here, and then it's pulled over here, and then it's here. So there's that same zigzag shape. Oh, and you know what? We need to do our little flowers here, because in the middle of these, they have this wonderful little yellow things. So I'm going to add those in, and I'm going to use a pretty dark value and almost like acrylic and add that in just like that oh gosh so pretty you guys I hope you give this a try and it's almost got this textury lemony feel of that wet and wet that it gives it just a tiny bit here Darken up that little end piece like that. All right, I feel like I should probably stop before I overwork it. Don't want to do that, and I can tend to do that because I just love doing this. And you know what? For fun, we could even add, you know me, you could turn this off right now if you're plenty happy with how you're at. But I think I'm going to add just a little touch, touch of my MAB Metallics. I always like having some kind of a little surprise in my paintings. Like on my cactus, I did the little thorns. So I'm gonna just brush that across there where somebody kind of has to stop and say, is that a sparkle I see? And just outlining the edges of this beautiful little flower here. So you really almost have to look to see this. It's so subtle and I love that. I'm going to grab a tiny bit of this purple, add it in there. Maybe to the center. And there you go. Now, really, it would be nice to have a couple of those maybe over here just to even it out. But I think, I feel like I'm okay with it. I feel like it kind of, this draws your eye to this 
And then here's the grand finale focal point. So it's kind of these pops of color placed in there and they kind of invite you in. We could do maybe one more leaf here. That was a very, very pale value to look like it's in the background. And I'll show you that. So maybe tucked inside here. Point. Oop, that is way too dark. I want to have like 80% water, 20% pigment, and just tuck that leaf into the back. There we go. I've got a tiny stem coming out here. Look how little that is. So it looks like there's this interesting leaf in the background. And I think I might stop there. Let's see, we could add one more here. Goodness, this is where, like I said, you can start overworking. It's kind of simple and nice right now. You know what, I'm not gonna do a thing. Okay, so there you go. I hope that was helpful and I'm really curious to um, look at this when I'm done and see how this new phone of mine, after that whole debacle with the cacti, um, how it's performing and how it looks. All right, everybody, have fun. Um, I will try and get a drawing of this up for you. And on my website every month, I offer free drawings. If you feel like, hey, I wanna contribute $2.50, you can go to my Etsy. You get these all downloadable with a swatch and a drawing and the original um, and some little guidelines to go with the tutorial. Um, and they're $2.50. So if you, you know, feel like you wanna contribute, that's awesome. If you can't afford those things, just email me. I am happy to send this little drawing your way. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being a part of my little community and I'll see you soon. Most of all, have fun.